Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth episode of the Lunch Table Podcast. I am joined by my lovely co-host, Travis Patrick, and today we have a great episode for you. But before we get into it, Travis is going to shout out our social medias. What do you got? Alrighty. For those who know, we have the Instagram and the Spotify. And for those who don't know, we had actually just started dropping videos on our YouTube channel, hoping to get video content up by the next episode. And for those that don't know, the ads for those channels are the lunch table underscore podcast 24. Please like and subscribe and give us many of shout outs as possible. And thank you for all the support. Yes. Thank you, Travis. And before we get any further, we also want to thank everyone for sharing and reaching out. We've gotten so much support the last few episodes. We love you all. And uh, Travis, this is going to be a good episode. I'm really excited for our guest. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. <laughs> I bet. So without further ado, guys, this week, our guest is someone Travis knows very, very well. Uh, she's now a teacher in the school we grew up going to. We went to school with her. Ladies and gentlemen, Faith Patrick. Woo! Yeah. How's it going, Faith? It's going good. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you on. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, those of you who have heard, my name is Faith. I'm married to the co-host, Travis Patrick. Um, I'm a teacher, a second grade teacher now at the school where we all grew up and I met all of these boys at. <laughs> um, I'm a coach there too. I coach middle school volleyball and high school basketball. Um, me and Travis just got married about three months ago. We've got a dog and hopefully a dog on the way. Um, <laughs> dog, dog on the way. Um, yeah. What else? <laughs> oh, and as of 45 minutes ago, I am the new lunch table merch manager. Woo! Ooh, speaking of the merch manager, we have a lot of apparel in the makings. They are looking very good. We're still working on that. And in hopes on episode five with video content, me and the other co-star Pierce, we will be wearing the merch on set. So yes, stay, sir. stay on the lookout for that. Yeah, we are really excited about this. Uh, so yeah, be on the lookout. So Faith, are you ready to uh, answer some questions? Let's do this. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time for our segment. Five real questions, five real answers with three real people. All right, Faith. Actually, guys, we're going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to ask the questions. Just, you know, maybe you can both answer. <laughs> so, all right, Faith. Well, what's it like being married to Travis? So, being married to Travis. We've only been married for three months. So, before we got married, what it was like being with Travis was I was living in a house full of three other boys. So, it was very, very, very interesting. <laughs> um, you never knew what you'd come home to or wake up to. Shout out, Aaron Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Um, and then being married to Travis has been very nice. I never know when I come home from work who will be at my house, what boys will be there, <laughs> how long they could be staying there, or what random things they've started like a podcast in my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one, though. All right, Travis. What's it like being married to Faith? What's it like being married to Faith Patrick? Well, I could go on and on for days, but uh, I'll try to keep it a little short. I mean, being being uh, married to Faith, it's pretty simple. It's a good life. Uh, we do have a random laundry fairy that will come do our laundry and fold <laughs> and put away. It's very interesting. I still have not to catch the laundry fairy, but very thankful for our pet fairy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Uh, being married to Faith, it's awesome. I mean, we, we're both living the dream. We both love each other very much. I mean, growing a family, cooking dinner together every night, just always doing stuff together and being happy about it, really. I mean, it's it's a good life. Yeah, that's that's awesome, guys. Their wedding was probably the be one of the best weddings I've ever been to. Top three on my list. It was a great time. So this, one, this next question specifically for Faith. So what is it... How much does it mean to you to teach in the school you grew up in? So it's pretty neat. Like a lot of people, they use Sherwood as a stepping stone and they get all these new teachers who are just trying to get a job in there. And then it's really sad because they leave in two, three years. 
just when they're starting to make their mark there. But for me, that's really not what it is. For those people, those, for those of you who don't know, I signed a contract at a big school in Belton. Thought I was going to start my career making a whole bunch of money. I thought it was going to be cool. And then I'd eventually maybe work my way back at Sherwood. But um, the stars aligned and everything worked out where I was able to resign from there and start right at Sherwood. So it's been a pretty neat experience getting to go from having the teachers I had as teachers and mentors to now I student taught at this school. They all worked with me, helped me get to where I am. And then this year being a teacher there, having them as um, co-workers and friends has been really neat. And it's really cool to just be back making a mark at the school that I um, got all my stuff from and coaching and coming completely full circle with it all has been really cool. No, that's awesome. Uh, and something that I've always wondered for teachers, like, you know, or students going back and teaching at the school they went to, is it is it kind of weird being around those people who taught you? Because there's still a lot of teachers there that taught us. And Is it, it weird or is it cool? Like, I mean, it's weird. At first it was weird. Last year when I was still student teaching and still kind of in the, like, t- uh, student mentor role, it was kind of weird. Um, but then this year, like, changing – from the respect ways of now it's not that student you once had 15 years ago. Now it's, um, we're working side by side, but it's really cool to see just to see both perspectives of like, Oh, why, why did that teacher do that? You kind of see exactly now how that works, but it's been really neat. And the support is tremendous down there, even with them having to switch roles as my teacher to now my coworker. It's been really good. That's awesome. I, I I will I will say uh, kick off another point on that. How how cool is it that the kindergarten teacher me and Pierce had and the same kindergarten teacher you had is right next door to you teaching along with you? How's it? How, is it weird? Is it like explain your? It's just a full circle it. moment. Like how's yeah. that feel for you? It's it's fun. It's fun to come in every day and have her, and it's just like neat to see um, the different things and the way she's moved on through the years on how she's done things I don't know how to explain it because for some it'd be weird but for me since I've been doing it it's not like weird anymore it's neat like having her come in my room and ask for advice and me going and asking for advice from her just because um she was in school like a while ago learning how to be a teacher and I'm fresh out so I ask her for her ideas she asks me for mine and we just bounce back and forth so it's kind of cool to see it on that aspect because things have changed so much from when we were in kindergarten to now that, like, she does not do any of... Well, she does some of the same things, but not, like, very many of the same right. things. So, it's kind of... Like, the room isn't even set up the exact same way it was when I was in there. She's still in the same room, which is neat to see. Mm-hmm. But things are moved around, so it kind of seems like a different aspect. But uh, how was your initial reaction, like, whenever you got your classroom assigned to you and your next-door neighbor is the same teacher your you first had. teacher yeah like, well did you like when you ran into her and seen oh miss miss saner or miss my bad miss stone king is right there like when you first said the first word you said to her was it awkward was it like wow this is i can't believe this is happening it's unreal it wasn't really awkward because we knew a teacher that was leaving from that room so we kind of knew like far in advance that that would be the room i was placed in but we did we didn't mention it and we were like, how funny is this that I walked in your room as a student and here now, so many years later, we're teaching right beside each other. So it's really, it's really fun to see. That's awesome. Um, so how, so like, hmm, I had a really good question. I lost it. Travis, do you have another question before I blank again? No, I, I don't. I think she, uh, she, uh, answered that very well, but, uh. We can move on to the next question anyways. Uh, about growing up at the high school that we all went to in sports. So I remember back in high school, something drastic happened and sports kind of went downhill. It took a change. Yeah, so we used to do a thing called dual sporting, as you probably do remember. We didn't get the chance to do it, but your freshman year, tell us a little about dual sporting. What was it like? And what happened to it? And why didn't we get the opportunity to dual sport? So when I was a <laughs> freshman, um, fall season, I decided um, my sister was a senior. It was going to be a really nice experience to get to do as many sports as I could alongside with her before she graduated. So 
I had always played volleyball and softball growing up. I knew when I got to high school, I wanted to do both. But with them falling in the same season, it was going to be tricky. Well, I went ahead. We signed up. There was a bunch of us girls in my um, class who signed up for both. And back then, you had to pick, like, a primary that if a game fell on the same day, you had to go to your primary. Well, turns out I picked softball for my primary but didn't get as much playing time when games started that I did with volleyball. So one day a game occurred on the same day and I had went to one of the coaches asking them, hey, can I go to volleyball instead of softball even though I didn't pick that as my primary? And it just caused a lot of like conflicts within like, oh no, we've got to hurry and switch our plans. And it was a pain in the butt. And so it turns out they decided like, that's just not going to work for us, this school anymore. We we're going to from here on out you guys can stay dual sporting this year, but then the following years we're not going to do dual sporting anymore. So we went ahead and just picked our one that we were going to do. And so we, some of us picked volleyball, some of us picked softball and quit doing both of them. But it really stinks because coming from a small school, everyone wants to do as much as they can. Right. And we don't have as many people. So I, I hope that it gets brought back. I understand the pains of it and like coming from a coach now – the perspective, yeah, it does stink, but like if you, if we set those boundaries at the beginning, and I know it's hard for kids once they realize, oh, I'll get more playing time, let me switch, but I think it is good opportunities, good and bad for both. So was it hard managing, when you were doing dual sport for softball and volleyball, was it hard managing, like, you know, practices for both sports, and then school, and whatever extracurriculars you were doing after? So, do we didn't have very many games that we were dual sporting until they decided like we needed to pick well they told us we could finish out the year but we just decided if we can't do it the next year we don't want to put all this work in for one year kind of thing so um we I, it was only a couple games that we made it where we were dual sporting so like when I had stuff to do after sports it wasn't like school work because it was over the summer but over over the summer it was pros and cons because you got to see your friends all day do activities that you like but you were really wore out um because we did like morning volleyball stuff afternoon softball stuff and it was every day you had to go to both of them so that was a lot but when you're with your friends and hanging out like time flies and it, so it wasn't too bad and then when school started we only had a couple games so it was kind of hard to manage but when you're in high school I feel like time is different than when you're an adult you don't have all these other responsibilities like what are you cooking for dinner when are we going to the grocery store right that kind of thing so what sports did you play like all through high school like what were your what were your sports before so it was softball volleyball and basketball and then i quit softball because we couldn't do a sport and just did um volleyball and basketball but then luckily i um did like outside of school competitive softball so i was able to still keep okay. that in aspect awesome so our next question for you is going to be a little, a little tough on the heartstrings of some of our viewers. Um, Travis, you can feel free to butt in and defend your friends on this one. But oh God. Faith, who are your top three friends of Travis's and why? And who, who is your least favorite friend of Travis's? Oh, let's not be too hard on that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my top three will not be in any certain order. But I do want to note that brothers, um, Aaron and Blake, are not included in any of these. So just keep that in mind in my rankings. Um, so top three, not in any order. I'm going to have to say that um, Kyle is ranked in one of the top three because he brings his girlfriend when the boys hang and we can kind of do our own thing. So he is ranked up there. Um, another one on the top three list is... Um, Pierce, because Thank every God. time he comes and visits, he brings a treat. This time it was um, Skittles. The time before were ghost drinks. So he is ranked very high on my list. And the other person who is on my top three ranking would be Carter. Because he always takes me on Mexican dates. And um, he's in the process of trying to get me another puppy. Oh. And then my least favorite <laughs> friend would have to be Wyatt. Um, wow. once again, least favorites don't include brothers. Um, <laughs> but my least favorite would have to be Wyatt because, um, he was uh, my roommate and, um, he never put the toilet seat up at the house and in the middle of the night 
it was quite a hassle to have to know if I was going to fall all the way in or not. Oh, put it down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't put it down. He always left it up. And then he wouldn't let me give him dating advice. And I think he really could have... Could have um, knocked out of the park with a couple of girls. Yeah, in his cl- classes, <laughs> if he would have took my dating advice. And then also, when I wasn't his roommate, the first time he stayed the night at our new house, he decided to puke, and I was up all night babysitting him to make sure he stayed alive. <laughs> Can we uh, talk about that real quick? Just what was that night like? Why yeah, was what, he what was up? the event that was happening? Give us, give us the rundown. Just a little bit. We might ask Wyatt next time we have him on here. Okay, so it was my college graduation, and we um, were up at um, Merle's having a good time, and he got a little rowdy, and we decided to come home. Let me repeat. It was my graduation night, and um, he was puking on the way home, puked outside of Travis's truck and in it. So Travis decides that he's going to go wash his truck, and I was on babysitting duty to make sure Wyatt stayed alive. And so I um, stood with Wyatt clothed. He was in the shower, clothed, laying on the ground. And I was to make sure to turn on the water every once in a while because he was shivering. Turn it off when he gave a weird noise. And make sure he didn't (laughs) puke anywhere else but in there while Travis was gone. What'd that weird noise sound like? Could you just give us a little? Well, I'd have it on the heat. And the next thing I know, if he wanted it off, he'd go, ah! And then I'd turn it (laughs) off. And then he just, it was a continuous process of that, back and forth, back and forth. So, real quick, Travis, how do you feel about that top three list? <sighs> that top three list really, really surprised me. I, I the, the one that really did surprise me is the least favorite. I can't believe that. Why it's always been there for us. I mean, he was in our big day. He was at our wedding. Ooh. At my bachelor party. I mean, he, he lived with us when we were at college at UCM and... It was just a good time, and he's just always been there for us, I guess. So that really surprised me. I will say what another thing that surprised me is the top three of my favorites. Uh, well, it's her favorites, not you. Oh, yeah, 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 I guess. But uh, what's saying along with that is uh, Carter. I mean, I don't even know who that guy is anymore. <laughs> yeah, who's that? Who's Car- Carter who? I thought he disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I was just joking. Shout out, Carter. <laughs> no, but the, the, the least favorite really did... It was like an it was an upset. <laughs> there's a few on there that it. there's a few that I didn't a couple names that I didn't hear that were little upsets to me. I I, I really did think shout out Matt. I thought you were gonna be on one of my top three. Oh Matt was Matt was on there because in his exact things where if you look at my notes he's crossed out but he was ranked <laughs> on there but he was it says Matt because he doesn't take any bullshit and so especially at um the wedding he kept them all in line he was like uh uh-uh, uh we're not doing this he was one of my favorites but. He was, he's like a newer friend, not a lifelong, and I thought um, the other boys might kill me if I put Matt on my top, but Matt's definitely on my top above the age of 25. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just surprised by one person, and I think we all know, and we love this person very much. He's one of our best friends. You know who I'm thinking about. Hunter Bailey. Yeah, I'm surprised. I am surprised on that one. Disappointed, too. Yeah, Hunter, he, but Hunter's like, um... So that, would he have made top five? He would have made top five, okay. for sure. I love okay. Hunter, but there he's we a go. seasoned friend. Like, he comes in <laughs> seasons. He, like... Well, he's he got a life outside of this, too. I know, but he, like, he'll call for, like, three months straight. He'll call every single day, every single night. What are we doing? And then we may not hear from him for a couple months. Then when we hear from him again, it's, like, months on months on months we hear from him. So he's like a seasoned friend. He comes and he okay. goes, but he's always there. Like if we needed him, he'd be the first one to come help us. Oh, definitely. But he's also the one who's like, when he's super busy, we don't hear from him. But like when he's not super busy, we hear from him every day and every night. Right. No, that's that's a good list. Uh, Travis, can you rent? What, what are your top three friends? Top, <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're going to start so much I, crap. I got so many friends, <laughs> to be honest with you, Pierce. But I will say I'm very thankful for you for oh, starting stop. this show. Starting this podcast with me. <laughs> I mean, it's been a blast. We're recording episode four, and we've got so many ideas for the show. Oh, yeah. I've been hanging out every week, recording with different people. It's fun. It's been it's been a blast so far. And thank you, everyone, for all the support and that you're showing for the show anyways. Shout out to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Faith. Last question. We're gonna. I'm gonna have you both answer this one because this is really good. What's one thing you would want to go back and relive from high school? Oh, am I going first? Yeah. Yeah, you go first. Okay. 
So, there's so many things I'd like to relive. But I feel like I'm kind of reliving some of them because I'm back at the exact school coaching the same sports I played. It's kind of getting to relive my days but through a different um, perspective and different role. So, that is like one thing. I, I would like to go back with my friends to be able to relive them but I'm kind of like reliving it, doing what I do. Right. But... One of my favorite times in um, high school was um, online classes. I had I was in a lot of online classes doing dual credit, and we were assigned to go to the library, and our poor librarian was told to watch over us and make sure we didn't hurt anyone or ourselves doing whatever we'd be doing. And most of the time, I would just do my online work outside of class, and so during my um, online hours, I would just mess around or do whatever. And so me, Kira, and our librarian at the time, Sarah Bradford, would all just take Swedish fish and just, we'd put it different corners in the room and we'd just toss them in each other's mouth the whole hour. And it was a blast. <laughs> and we'd just talk about life and do, me and Kira would do everything to avoid doing whatever we were actually supposed to be doing. <laughs> and um, it was great. So I'd love to go relive that. Just one more day of that. So what it seems like you're saying is uh, you would want to relive and rekindle all of your girlfriends from high school is is what it's it's sounding like like you'd like to spend time with them more and just uh, relive the moments that you had having fun with them. All. Right, you went from seeing them every day to just seeing them whenever you guys have the time. Like, is that really what you're kind of getting from that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wow. shout uh, out face friends. Shout out face friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, that's, I, yeah, I would like to go back because we got to see each other every day, but now with social media and everything else, you can, like, I see their days in a different, like, far away now. I would like it if we, like, we all try to get together every once in a while, but life gets tough and people get busy and have their own schedules, so I'd love, yeah, if we could all go back and live one day, relive it, one basketball practice, one volleyball practice, one lunch table lunch with my girls would be fun just kind of relive the glory days and see where if we talked about then where we all end up now it's crazy so i know you said you know one we said one like basketball practice or whatever one day is there like a athletic event you were in that you wish you could go back and just win that game or make that play. You know what I mean? Is there something that, you know, make that game-winning shot? Like, is there any particular games you can think about or moments like that? Well, I'd like to relive senior night of volleyball. That was a blast. We had um, Brian Himes was our principal, and he's actually actually still the principal up there Shout right out. now. But um, he – we had no idea what he was going to do. He said – Leave it in the hands of him. He will make it epic. And so we're like, oh, God, what can he do to make this so cool? So we were all just expecting he was going to announce our names, like when they did the announcing, and he was going to be make some funny joke, whatever. But he decided he was going to blow out this whole thing, and he decided right when it was time, they announced all the um, other team. I can't remember who we were playing right then, but he announced them, and they – you announce them kind of in order, blah, blah, blah. If they're a senior, yada, yada. And then he gets to us, and he acts like he's going to announce us in the same lame, monoto <laughs> monotoned way, um, and he didn't. Next thing we know, the lights shut off. And oh, we thought, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, what's happening? Did, like, a power outage. The weather wasn't bad. So we all kind of looked at each other in, like, disbelief, thinking, oh, great. This is going to be a way to have our senior night. And then next thing we know... The stage curtains fly open, and we're like, oh, gosh, who's putting on a skit? And then this light just keeps going crazy, and he has, like, the spotlight. It was me. Spotlight. It was me and Luke. Okay, yeah, the spotlight is going it. crazy. <laughs> Moving all around, and we're like, what's going on? And next thing I know, he is screaming on that thing, and he he names us all out as he calls us out, and they we're going through the tunnel, and the spotlight's moving, and he gives us, like, a fun little... Like, I remember it was either Katie or Kira's was they can put, spike it up and block it down like the Great Wall of China or something. <laughs> he had something for all of us, and it was so fun. In that game, we were all hyped because of that, and we won that game. So it's not like I'd like to go and relive that and, like, win it because we won it, but, like, that was something Just that, that moment was so special. Yeah. Yeah. I always go back, and when it hits on my time hop, watch the video and just 
if anybody was watching me like a fly on the wall, they'd be like, oh my gosh, because I'm just smiling, giggling the whole time. Like, it was such a blast. Oh, I remember that night really well, because before the game, Himes came up to me and Luke. It's like, hey, you want to do something fun? We're like, yeah. So we went backstage, and he's like, we're going to turn off the lights. And you're going to shine the spotlight on the players. And we're like, can we go crazy? And he goes, you can go crazy. This isn't word for word, but I just this is just what I remember. And the lights go out. A couple of underclassmen open the curtains. And Luke and I are just, we just have one side. And we're just going all over the place. And we're cracking up the whole time. And we're just, woo, woo. That, that, was a, that was a great night. Yeah, me and um, Mr. Himes had this, like, ongoing love-hate relationship. And I think <laughs> it still comes to this day. Because he had, um, before he became a principal, he had my sister, older sister, in... Um, like normal classes he was a math teacher or whatever and so he always joked around with me that I was or he, I was his least favorite Harvey girl at the time <laughs> and it drove me crazy so every time I was in the hallway with him I'm like don't worry you're my least favorite Himes person either blah 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 and so he decided too on senior night that it'd be funny that when he was going to announce my name he acted like the mic went out so he was like oh fa- are again like he acted like the mic went out and so we we still have a love-hate relationship but that was another one of that funny good times from it so something else to go on the same topic of something you'd want to relive this may be a little touchy for you but i remember your senior year basketball got cut a little short do you want to you want to go in and tell us what happened go along with uh all this like the surgeries and stuff you had to go through like what why were they needed and what happened yeah, so I had a lot of health issues when I was in high school. I had gallbladder surgery um, that took a while to work up, so I missed some sports but tried to play through them. And then senior year of high school, I just had, like, a lot of pain. Couldn't figure out what it was. I was in and out of the chiropractor's office, and they finally diagnosed me with slipped rib syndrome. And it's where um, my bottom two floating ribs would go in and out of place. And usually, it's very, very rare, but usually people only have it on one side if they have it. And sure enough, I had it on both sides, so it made it, like, really tough. Like, even if I was driving on a gravel road and we hit a bump, they would sometimes, like, come out of place. So, when I was playing Mm -hmm. sports, it was really difficult. But um, volleyball wasn't as bad, and, like, I could bear it more because... And I, like, wore a brace, which was god-awful, but um, because it wasn't as much contact like if I made contact it was with the ground and I would just hope for the best going forward but basketball season it's pretty much all contact you've got the other team right there in your face not across from the net so um it wasn't even like a fourth of the way through the long season that my uh, doctors were like we just don't think it's like worth it for you to keep playing like we think it could cause more damage they're just getting looser they keep coming out more often because it went from coming out like once a week to then like when you're going down the gravel road like mm. it became mm. a daily occurrence more of me frequent, having, yeah, yeah having to go to the chiropractor get him popped in and so we tried many things we did acupuncture we did a whole, um just a bunch of things pain clinics to just try to rule, make any way other than surgery be an option and then we went ahead and went with the surgery i didn't get to play after like halfway through my senior year the doctors cleared me so i got to play one minute of senior night. So that is like something I wish I could go back and do was play the whole game Mm -hmm. of senior night rather than just one minute. But I was like thankful that I got to play one last time. But then um, after school got out, I went ahead and got the surgery and they just took out those two cartilages and the bottom two floating ribs on each side. And yeah, now I've been good. Man, that, that that's very devastating, really. I mean, as for me and Pierce's perspective, we with COVID happening our senior year, our sports did get cut short, but also we didn't go through the pain that you had to physically go through. But we do know how it feels for the, the your season to get cut short. It right. sucks because you know you probably never get to play it again. Mm-hmm. So it it really does just blow all around. Yeah, it's what wasn't a good situation for you, but. Just something we can all wish to go back and do. So, Travis, just real quick, what's something? What, what do you want to go back and do if you could? If I could go back and redo something in high school, it would date someone other than Faith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. If I had to 
go back to relive it. It was just it just be to the spend time with with all my friends and I as much as it sounds terrible, but I I'd, I'd love to just redo one more football practice. I'd love just to do one more down and back on the basketball court with with my buddies, just to to go through all that hard work. Even if the, we didn't have a positive season, just being there with your friends every day after school and going to games and stuff, it was just so much fun. The bus rides mm. were the best. <laughs> I would, I'd do anything to, to relive a bus ride for oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. We always had the greatest times. We'd always make jokes. Uh, shout out Hunter and Kyle <laughs> in the back of the bus being goofballs. Dude, that, that made the trip. <laughs> the rides home were the best when we'd win too. Were you there for a... Well, just real quick, were you there for uh, Hard in the Paint? Uh-uh. I don't... For Coach? Oh, he goes yeah. Hard in the Paint? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we have... So, like Well, like Travis said, we had so many great memories. Just, and I agree with that. Just going back to anything. Just being with the boys. High school, high school for me, personally, it was, it was an awesome time. I mean, you wake up every day to go to school, but you're always seeing your friends and now in the different perspective that we are, I'm grown up now I'm married. I don't, I mean, we all have separate lives. We don't really get to see each other that much as we would like to really. So right. Going along with that. Uh, would, would you like to ask us any questions, Faith? Yeah. Before though, if you and your friends, if you wanted to get one more down and back with all your friends, you can go ahead and, um, get them all together, come back and, um, we can run you at basketball Screw practice. Screw that. A couple of down and backs. Oh, I'm, I'm the reason we had to run so many one and tens. Or one and, or two and twenty twos. <laughs> oh, I would not Sorry, want to boys. relive the latter. No, thank you. No, dude. I'd do a down and back, but I'm not reliving the six and sixty six. Dude, don't even remind me of Woo! that. I shout felt out, shout out so, Steinoff, baby. Yes, shout out Coach Steinoff. Golly. Yeah, what's your question for us? Okay, right? so my question is every week you guys have a new guest on your podcast is there any way we can get an insight on who is your next guest on your podcast next week episode five who is your special guest well i'm not gonna go in and uh completely give it away but i'll, I'll give some hints around the topic anyways uh so for episode five we are wanting to do video content along with our audio and just make it make it some little funner for you guys. All the support that you're giving us, make it. If you're bored, you can watch us talk in a, the little studio that I make up in in our guest room. <laughs> something funny, but uh, he's he's something good. Oh, so it's a boy. Whatever they want to be. <laughs> well, yeah. I we mean, don't want to give it away, we're, Faith. This we're... is our thing. We're keeping it private. Okay, I'll I'll say. For all of our guests, it's uh, so honestly someone we went to school with. Oh, wait, here's a hint. We mentioned them in this episode. Were they on the top three friend list, or were they the least favorite? No. Sorry, no more questions. <laughs> I, my <laughs> I one plead, question didn't get answered. I plead the fifth. Yeah. We got to keep it private, man. Yeah. Just because you're married to Travis doesn't mean you Okay, fine. Previous. Then let me ask a different question. Then. Okay. But that one can't be answered. So, you guys, who was your... Favorite teacher in high school and why? Ooh. Oh, I'll go first. John Mueller. You can only have one, though. You can't be like, I liked this one and this one, and they're equal. John Mueller. Like, I loved all my teachers. They were the best. John Mueller made the biggest impact in my life, and I love that lady to death. Why? You gotta get a real reason. Why? why? Because she was the greatest to us. She treated us like we were her kids, no matter how. She just knew when something was wrong with us, she knew. How we were feeling without us telling her, she gave the best advice. Like, and even now we can text her, and she'll still hit us with the Mama Mueller text. She'll tell it. She'll tell us. So that shout out Miss Mueller. We really want to have her on here sometime. But that would that, be, that's mine. That'd be awesome if we could get her on here. I think the the support would love. To, I think everyone would love that to talk. Yeah, for sure. All right, Travis. How about you? One. I, one. I was just one. I, I'd say a lot of teachers had a lot of impacts on me for different but reasons. But who was your favorite? My, <laughs> if I had to go with my favorite, I would have to say, sorry, Coach Lake, I'd have to go with uh, Preston Steinoff. Nice. I mean, I I went through a lot of a lot of pain with that with him in general. We 
we started something with me and a couple of other my buddies, and we were just always in the weight room, always working out, always bonding. I mean, he coached every sport that I played almost, and uh, we were just always had we had a strong connection for the most part. I mean, we would always be working out or doing some type of physical activities, and it was. It was just an awesome time in my life, and I remember after he uh, announced that he was leaving to go back to get closer with his family, we were very devastated, I remember. but it's it, tough. Before all that happened, he was just always there for us. If we ever needed to talk, I mean, he basically lived at the school. I remember he had a he actually had a cot in the locker cot. room because <laughs> some late night games, as I mean, as you're a coach, Faith, you know how late it can be to get back to the school. And Preston, he was just always, always doing it and just staying in a. He cot. did the most. Yeah, like in a good way. Yeah, that's that's how what I'd have to say. How about you? Well, I'd have to say, well, to piggyback on off of that, he was one of my favorite people too, just because he um, gave me insights on what time practice was happening and how long it'd be happening one day when I decided to go um, put shaving cream all over Travis's truck, <laughs> fill it with glitter, fill the cab full with uh balloons so he was one of my favorites too but um my favorite teacher ooh, that is tough i would have to say that my well not my favorite teacher but my favorite they were my favorite coaches so i'll just have to well okay teachers um (laughs) that i had because i can't say those people so my favorite teacher was had to be sarah bradford Which, because she was one of those people that I walked in for online classes. I had her, like, five times a day senior year. Um, She would be able to be, like, know exactly what I needed if I needed something. She happened to be my neighbor, so she knew all family stuff that was going on and could be my therapist, my teacher, my support, anything I needed. And then now to this day, one of my um, best coworkers and one of my good friends at the school, so... It was crazy how she went from being my favorite teacher to now one of my besties at the school. That's awesome. All right, Faith, well, we really appreciate having you come on the episode and talk with us. Uh, We know it was a real long drive to get here. Yes, it was. Yeah. (laughs) We're in her house, by the way. No, we appreciate you for coming on, answering all these questions, and having fun with us. Uh, Hopefully you can join us again. Maybe we'll get some more insight out of you or anything. I don't know. So, uh, Travis, you got anything before we sign off? Uh, keep keep uh, staying tuned with the podcast uh, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. CST. And thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in for yet another week. And we will see you next week. I'll watch you walk away. The stars are falling right in place. I'll watch you walk away. You stole my heart from inside of me.